coming back. Go, go, go. All right, good job, guys. Graceful. Uh, bye guys, good luck catching your flight. Well, hello everyone, this is uh, Dennis and Ann from GTFO Plan, so we're going to do another review today. Yep, still have the tape. The tape. It's still a secret. That's right. So today we're going to talk about the Balance 526. Yes. Uh, we first saw this boat at the 2019 Annapolis Boat Show. Loved it. I mean, this is a beautiful boat. Uh, and I think the one thing that we loved the most about it was the, the Versa Helm, which is, uh, we'll talk more about it later, but it's definitely, definitely a, a unique feature to the sailboat. Yeah, uh, the starting price seemed out of our range. So when we went to the Miami Boat Show in 2020, we kind of bypassed it the first day. And on the second day, we decided to take a look again. And we talked to Balance owner, CEO, Philip Berman, and technical lead, Andrew Hodgkin. And, Vingal yes. yeah, it was Vingalodi was the boat, uh, the owner, Edwin, and he was super helpful. So we got really just like a lot of great information and that's when we heard the balance is developing a 482, which is a 48 foot length and a 442. And obviously the price goes down with each length decrease. Yeah, and the other nice thing too that they had talked about was where you lose your length is in the bow and in the transom area, not in the living room area, because they had three schematics of all three models kind of lined up and from the 526 down to the 482, you lost maybe six inches to a foot in some spots at most. And then from the 482 down to the 442, maybe again another six inches. And when I say the living area, that was primarily the, the, the salon and the, uh, the cockpit air, sorry, the, the salon and the cabins. One of the things that affects performance is water line length. So when you go from a 52 to a 48 to a 44, you're decreasing your water line length and that decreases your performance. So there's about a 10% decrease in performance each step down um, with each model. Now, that being said, that you have that 10% loss as you go down to each model, when you look at the sail area displacement ratio, the sail area ratio versus the displacement ratio, all three models are still exceptional performers. Uh, in fact, I mean, they also have dagger boards so you can point higher as well, but this is definitely a performance oriented boat. Yeah, and performance, speaking of the dagger boards, isn't just about your waterline length and your displacement, but also um, performance, if you can point higher, closer into the wind, which many production catamarans cannot do at all, you can get to places a lot faster because you can head to where you want to go. So some quick boat details before we get going, but uh, depending on where your dagger boards are at, you're going to have anywhere from three and a half to seven foot uh, draft. You got about 51 feet for the 526 of, of your LWL, your, your waterline length. It's got two 57 horsepower Yanmar engines with 130 gallons total of diesel. Uh, you get about well, 20... 260 total because you have two 130 gallon tanks. You have, correct. So 260. Correct. And then you get 203 gallon freshwater tanks. Uh, and the beam's just over 27, so that is a limiting factor with some of the, the marinas and the, what they can hoist out. But So now we're getting into some more details, and here's our review. So the cockpit is amazing. Um, both the cockpit and the salon have telescopic tables, so you can lower them and have a coffee table, or you can lower them even more, the height of the cushions, and make extra beds, which is great because, as you know, we have six kids, and that gives us a lot more options uh, for places that they can be sleeping. And just the general layout is really nice, lots of places to lounge, to relax, and the Versa Helm, genius. You really don't need a nav table. Right, uh, the, yeah, the Versa Helm, just by allowing that stern, the, the wheel to, to rotate from the up to the down position, and then you have the some of your instruments on a swivel, it's, it is, it's genius. I mean, it frees up space uh, on the interior in the salon. You don't have to have a dedicated nav table anymore because with the wheel down, you are literally right there in the doorway, uh, and you can see, 
you have great visibility. You can see mm -hmm. all your corners, uh, you really know, uh, through, through the through the salon. Yeah, and one thing that we love that they're working on, and you can find more information in the balance videos, but they have a thing called an integral system. It's basically beefed up alternators. So when you're running your engines, it does a fast charge of your battery. And so by eliminating the need for a generator, think about it, a generator is like one more engine to maintain. And you already on a catamaran have two diesel engines. So by not having another engine, a gen set basically, you reduce your maintenance and reduce your carbon footprint as well. Right. Uh, and you know, you can have all the arguments and discussions about whether you need a generator or not, but this is just one other option. Sure, it's more wear and tear on your engines, but again, as Ann pointed out, that's just one less engine, if you will, that you're having to worry about without needing that gen set. Uh, but the other piece that ties in with it too is you're going to end up having lithium batteries most likely, so you have that deeper battery bank. So when you mm -hmm. charge them that much faster with the integral system, you're just better off in the long run. Yeah, you have a lot more power still to use. And again, one thing that's really important to us, I think we've mentioned in videos, is the pool enclosure. And they do an amazing job with the pool enclosure around the cockpit. So if you have bad weather, you have that protection from the elements. And you can bring the helm down if it's raining and steer with the Versa helm in the down position. And you're completely out of the elements. You have basically a protected place to control your boat. Yeah, and you have that sliding cover that closes that cockpit portion of when that Versa helm wheel is down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you just have a little skirt for that little walkway as well and you get that full enclosure. Yeah, and as you can see, getting to the exterior, the walk around, there's plenty of storage. All the lines run to the helm, which will be really nice because it'll mostly be the two of us sailing. Right. So shorthanded is easy to do when all the lines run to the helm. And the dagger boards uh, completely recess down, so you have nothing you know, blocking up your walkways. Yeah, the deck is completely clean. And yeah. similar to the Seawind 1600 that we reviewed previously, your dagger boards are completely invisible. Now, again, much like we talked about last time, whether you like that or not, that's a personal preference. Uh, I think we're probably more inclined to have that visual of having dagger boards up and knowing that you're not dagger boards down as you're coming into a shallower area. Yeah. Uh, and, and on that note too, this is unique to the 526, the inboard dagger boards. Uh, from what Balance told us, the 482 and the 442 will have the dagger boards that come up on top of the deck so you do get that visual. Yeah. Yep. Uh, other than that, I mean, there's plenty of storage up front as well. Uh, you'll, you'll see here that uh, where the sail lockers are, you've got plenty of space. Mm -hmm. uh, the anchor locker has plenty of space. Uh, so yeah, this boat is not lacking uh, for space up front in the deck area. Yeah. And one thing that is amazing is the headroom height. It probably has the highest headroom of any multi-hull that we've been on which is super nice. And also what that does is that it gives you a very big feeling of openness. It makes a smaller space seem that much bigger. Right. So the other nice thing with the salon too, well, that, that headroom is not just in the salon. It's also down below uh, in, the, in the cabin area as well. Uh, but as you're coming through the sliding doors, you'll see, you know, just to the right where the Versa Helm comes down, there is a big folding window that folds inward. Uh, again, that just creates more open space. Um, and airflow. And airflow. Ventilation yep. is super key when you're in the tropics. Yeah, you'll see the, Anne already mentioned the telescoping table in the salon area, so that folds down becomes another bed for folks. Mm -hmm. Or if you're doing a passage, you know, if you just need to lay down real quick and you want that other crew member close by where they can rest, uh, but if there's a situation that requires all hands, then, then you can do that. Yeah. Um, the other nice thing too is that the glass that's in the salon area, it's aircraft quality grade glass, so you're not going to have crazing or cracking mm -hmm. or things you typically find on not aircraft grade glass. Right. And the visibility is just phenomenal as you look around. Oh, it is incredible. Um, and the galley is fantastic. Um, it has plenty of storage, it has plenty of fridge and freezer storage, and an induction option for the oven, which is something we would like to keep propane off uh, the interior of our boat since it is an explosive gas. Right, just have it out to the grill in the cockpit. Yeah. So moving on to the owner's cabin, uh, great ventilation. And one of the advantages with the higher ceilings is you have a good cross flow and you can get the hatch open 
and that'll draw the air in and then down and through. And without that two window system, you don't really get that wind naturally pushing through. Right. Uh, and with the cabin, the master cabin, the way they've designed the bunk is it goes it goes across the, uh, the it, it goes across the boat, <laughs> whatever I'm trying to say. Um, but that's why it allows you to have that overhead hatch. It gives you that great airflow. Mm -hmm. And then as you move towards the back where the where the where the head is, uh, again. Phenomenal access to all the systems. I mean, in just a few cabinets, you'll see your water heater, your black water holding tank, uh, your, some of your electronical components. Um, again, just great use of space. Great use of space and also easily accessible. And that's really key when you need to maintain things. You don't need elf hands to get to things. You can right. get to all sides easily. Uh, it's really, really key for long-term use. And you're not just yeah. chartering, but you yeah. actually own the boat and have yeah. to do a lot of maintenance of your systems. Now the one thing that I think was a little bit of a downside for me is I, I, I love the accessibility of getting to those different systems and components but it does eat up a little bit of your storage space uh, mm -hmm. or you know you're putting your whatever toiletries or clothing items you know right next to or in close proximity to the water maker or the holding tank or, or, or something so uh, just do less but, do less clothes. Well, I should do no clothes, Cl right? Clothing optional. <laughs> clothing optional. <laughs> uh, so then when you come over to the other side, uh, the way it's laid out, it also has that cross cabin, again, with the overhead uh, hatch. It's a mm -hmm. great airflow there. Um, what I loved about this side is that the head and the shower were completely separate. Uh, most boats have your head and shower together. Uh, so if one person's using it, they're tying up that head and the shower. Mm -hmm. So with this design, you can have one person using the bathroom, brushing their teeth, whatever, while another person conceivably could be taking a shower. Yeah. Which, uh, great, 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 great layout and design of that, that, yeah. that feature. Uh, and then even the, 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 the final aft cabin on some of the models, it does have that split bed option, uh, mm -hmm. which you also saw, I think that was the sea wind, which was really nice. So if you have younger kids or, you know, you want to create two separate individual right. bunks and all you have is just that one cabin left uh, you can you can utilize that feature as well yeah now one comment uh, we've seen is the steps are steep going down into the hulls and like with every boat there's trade-offs and that's a trade-off you know you get that high headroom which is great you know my mm -hmm. boys are six four six five height and they don't have to stoop in this boat at all no um, but the trade-off is you have steeper steps getting down into right. the hull. So right. you got to pick your battles and decide what's important to you and go from there. Yeah, because that hull design is shaped for that performance aspect. And so, yeah, they're steep, but exactly as Anne's saying, you mm -hmm. know, you, you want to keep that feature with regards to that. Yeah. So. So that's our review of the Balance 526. And a big thanks to Edwin for letting us sail yes. on it from Miami to Fort Lauderdale. Yes, it was a that was great awesome. sail. Yeah, it was about 40, 50 miles. Uh, <laughs> it was quite the adventure because we had a bit of a miscommunication in terms of the captain and the owner thought we were flying home out of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we were flying home out of Miami, which is about an hour difference. So hence you saw the video in the beginning of how we, uh, how we successfully managed to exit a boat and make our flight. <laughs> Less gracefully on my part. I had no idea that I was going to be jumping onto a cement pier while wearing a skirt. So. I know. I was already on the pier by that point. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, so is this boat the perfect balance for us? Wait and find out. Yep. Just a few more to go. Yeah. Say